Yeah. Well, well, they put it in. I know that. It's a field yeah. now. <laughs> Pretty crazy. And I don't know if maybe Brian knows it because I know Brian and the guys were out there a few times inspecting portions of it. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dale, regular meeting of the council order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Additions, deletions, changes to the proposed agenda for this evening. Are there any? <coughs> Roll call. President Schneider. Present. President Pro Tem Dyke. Present. Council Member Feldman. Council Member Glasser. Present. Council Member Kuligowski. Present. Council Member Powell. Present. Council Member Stuffler. Present. Communications, there were none for this meeting. Regular meeting minutes for our March 5 council meeting. <clears throat> this, since this was a joint meeting uh, amongst three governmental bodies, um, the roll call uh, needs to be cleaned up a little bit because it can get confusing. Uh, normally, and I, I don't think this would be a problem, Kim. Um, but you can tell me if it is. Uh, so I think some first names need to be used. Okay. Because who's, <laughs> which, <laughs> Feldman, which Glasser. So, oh, um, I, see, I see what you're saying. Yes. So for um, when there's reference to either Glasser or Feldman, council members should be used and council members absent should be used for so for Glasser, yes, Feldman, yes. Planning Commission, um, that would be Bob Miller, and DDA would be Holly. Okay. And Feldman, Trish. Yep. Just so it's clear. <clears throat> um, Ashlyn or Wayne might want you to spell her name correctly. Yes. <laughs> so that would be helpful. Okay, then let's see. To agenda item number two, DD, DDA appointment. Uh, President Schneider appointed, past tense. DD at the end, appoint, please. And uh, anybody else on minutes? General Fund. Major streets, local streets. Parks and Recreation Fund. Downtown Development Authority. Sewer Fund. Water fund, equipment fund, payroll register report, DPW monthly report. Sorry, skipped over the water report. Rental report. Uh, wastewater treatment plant monthly report. Ordinance enforcement officer report. Construction code authority, building permits.
Clerk Dresser's report. Um, Kim, can you just update us a little bit on this reference to Frontier and what they're doing within the village? Um, actually, um, Mr. Ferguson could probably update, okay. update you better. <laughs> just uh, update us just a bit. What's yes, happening with uh, Frontier? <clears throat> we met with Frontier a few weeks ago to understand the details of their build out. They are expanding inside the village limits. So they're adding uh, fiber optic cable throughout town. They're doing it in different sections. They're uh, pulling permits with us. That's one of the things we uh, reminded them of was if they're going to be uh, going into the ground, they have to pull a permit with us. So they will be doing boring. Uh, right now, I think they're doing uh, only aerial things in certain neighborhoods. So uh, we will have another provider available this year. And I believe they have provided door hangers and flyers through the mail to almost every resident. And they're going to begin when? They actually started last week. Okay. All right. So that'll be a great benefit. <sighs> Trying to become a little more modernized. Thank you. So, um, entertain a motion with regard to consent agenda. I have a comment on the sure. Oh, please. Consent agenda, um, Steve. Maybe I missed it, but did, I don't think you said police report. Um, I did have a comment on the police report. Um, I think you're right. And our our um, or my comments um, last meeting, I requested that Chief Martin um, provide some additional information on Jake breaking ordinance enforcement in the village. Um, was that passed along to Chief Martin? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, I still <coughs> would like to see that. Um, and then as a reminder, we on council, we have requested that we get a little bit more detail um, for the police report in addition to the Excel spreadsheet. Just wanna reiterate that request. That will be addressed for sure. And yeah, so you're, you are correct. Um, and <laughs> also just another note that I like the inclusion of the chart for the violation categories from the OEO. Very nice. Much easier to read. <laughs> Much easier to read. Yep. Light is going to become a more and more significant issue and a lot more attention paid to it. That's, this is as a result of using the new system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And, and some emphasis on that with particular regard to our present manager. Comment on the Jake breaking. Is there, I haven't seen signage of that going through town as well. So is that something we may want to post? <coughs> we can uh, look into is that yeah. going into Lapeer. I know they have that in several it would locations. would be um, re a request. Pardon me, Mr. President. I mean, can I answer? Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> it would be a request to MDOT to yeah. install those. But I'm yes, 50. we can do that. Okay. I, I did um, speak with um, the um, engineer from MDOT that covers our area to inquire about that. It wasn't exactly his area, um, but did say that he could look into that for us. So um, if our manager wants to pursue that along your lines as well, I think multiple lines of inquiry would be it was, um, and you know, you're aware of this too, is that we were told that we weren't allowed to post signage um, due to MDOT restrictions. And he indicated there might be a little more wiggle room than we initially were aware of. Good job. Thank you. Uh, anybody else commentary discussion regarding the consent agenda? Entertain a motion. Support. Motion, motion made by President Pro Tem Dyke, Council Members, supported by Council Member Steffler, approved the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimously approved by all Council Members who are in attendance. We're missing one this evening. So uh, before we move on with our agenda, uh, public comment time with the uh, regard to regular agenda items. Um, probably most of the uh, audience members are aware of this and indicate what was gonna happen. 
um, at, or two meetings ago. So uh, public comment time, there's a three minute uh, time limit. And so you can make um, any presentation you have to make regarding any item that it's on our regular agenda. Um, and so that will be, as you know, strictly enforced. Um, and uh, additionally, uh, no outbursts from the audience. Um, and it's a violation, law enforcement is present, and I will ask for you to be removed. Other than that, um, the floor is open at this point in time. It is time for public comment for any item that is on our regular agenda. I'm Paula Alfonsi from Elmont Township. Um, I want to address social district drinking. Um, when it was voted on two meetings ago, I don't think it was a fair vote. I don't think you guys were properly informed. Um, there was a lot of, uh, for one, it was all through social media and the, the emails that that's what you based it on. You never even considered the 54 plus signatures that I had. So in reality, you had 77 emails for it and you said you had 11 emails against it. But if you add the 54 signatures that I have, that would be 77 to 65, not 80, 20. Um, that was one thing. I would also like to know if any of the emails were from the Lucy Hartz or the James Johnson families. Um, I would be real curious to see that, but I would have to FOIA all that information. Um, as far as policing the area, uh, Chief Martin was here, but I understand, and he's agreeing that he's, everybody can handle it, the police are gonna handle it. But my understanding is he's leaving us in April. Is that correct? It's an interrogation time, Paul. Okay. Um, so the other thing make. is I would like to point out that the previous boards, the DDA boards, were uh, two previous directors had full boards. Nancy Boxy had a full board and it was run by the state guidelines. Kim Schull had a full board and it was run by the state guidelines. Mr. Rusa comes in, forms an intentional attack on Kim Schull, and all the board members tend to bail within months. After two years, they still do not have a full board and it is not run according to state guidelines. They have only two business owners on the board. And I kind of hate to bring this up because I do respect some of the members. Um, you have three cases of nepotism on this board. And as in reality, the three family members who are on the village council board and related to the DDA members should abstain from voting on any of these. And that didn't happen. Um, Andy spoke that all the businesses were for this and they were all gonna benefit for it. I spent the day going around to 60 different businesses. I'm, I only made it to 27 because each business that I went to, I had to explain to them what social district drinking was. They had no clue. There is eight people. I have 25 no's out of 60 businesses that said this is not gonna help their business at all. Um, so the, the interesting part was is they act like they've all discussed this with all the businesses, and they haven't because these businesses are confused more than ever. Eight of them put 50-50 because they really don't understand. Time's up. Somebody want to donate their minutes? I want to donate three minutes. I'll donate three minutes. Thank you. Not um, donate. Um, no, that's not the rule. Sorry. Paula has an that? opportunity to speak. She had her three minutes, and you're not donating. This is not that kind of game. We're not playing games here. There's rules. She, Paula's Speaking had an opportunity to make herself heard. She always does whenever we have issues like this. But and legally, research well, people so. can yield their three minutes to me. No, cannot. That Those are not our rules. We have a structure. We're going to follow it. Okay. You, you, had, you um, spoke your piece. Can I hand you out one more piece of paper? You can. You, any document you want to turn into our clerk? You're more than welcome to. Thank you. Since the topic has come up, 
Let's uh, address, address that uh, issue um, regarding the nepotism thing. Steve, the can we, I'd like uh, us to continue with public comment, please. I mean, this is, this is time for it to hear. Good evening, my name is Lynn Marta. I've been a resident of Elmont for 38 years. Um, my concern, pardon me? Address please. 6816 General Squire. Is that you know, a village or township? That is township. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little confused as to the contradiction between the uh, the act that Governor Granholm, in, or excuse me, uh, our current governor enacted with respect to the bars being able to enact this social district, and yet the Michigan Liquor Control Commission has issued a statement that no alcohol can be retailed within 500 feet of a church or a school. So in one of the previous meetings, it was stated that the lawyers all approved this. I'm curious as to who the lawyers were that did approve this. Can anyone answer that question? It's not interrogation time. You're allowed to make comment. I was just asking. I'm sorry. All right. Um, I, I am very curious as to see how this is all going to shake out because I'm thinking there's some irregularities that may crop up we haven't thought of. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. Hi, I'm Keith Ferguson, 533 Johnson Street. I live right here in town. I had some questions. The rumor is there's going to be concerts in the parking lot behind the bars. If there's concerts in the parking lot behind the bars, where are we going to park? There's already, you go up there on a, any night and you struggle for a parking spot to eat at one of these three establishments. Two, would I be allowed to buy a beer at Speedway, walk across the road into the social district area and drink it? I don't think so. And, uh, I just think it's a problem, and I see your minds already made up. So, and probably all you people minds are already made up. So I guess I just wasted a minute and a half of your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next, is there more public comment? Pam Frazak. I live within the village limits, right on Main Street. Um, I was here in early February. And I know that you're not going to answer any questions, um, no matter what I say. So I would just like to make a comment about what was put on Facebook after I spoke early in February. Um, it was clearly mocking me. And I really don't think that anybody getting hit walking across the street legally is something to be laughed at. Could you Shortly please address at, the social district issue? It is, is about, it is about the social district issue. Okay. Because after yeah. I spoke... The traffic right. accidents regard to the social district? Yes, because that was the reason that I spoke last please, please, a month ago. Please relate it to the social district. Because it's extremely dangerous crossing our streets, and the police department does not have a handle on that. I was hit walking across the street. About a week or so after I spoke at this meeting, strictly about that particular issue, that is the issue that is my my utmost concern is the safety issue of the social district. Shortly after that, there was a post that was put on Mikey's, and Mr. Rose had put in his post and a comment after it that said, just don't take that drink outside, you might die. That's the mentality that we have of the DDA that's going to be running this. They think it's funny that someone gets hit walking across the street. And I hope that that does not happen to his children, himself, or anybody else sitting here, or anyone else in this community. Any further public comment? Being none. I should say, I'm further. Moving on to our regular agenda, wastewater treatment plant equipment purchase. Um, Mr. Manager, I presume you're going to make that presentation. Clint is not present. Well, uh, 
uh, Mr. President, the item that's in the packet is a, a furnace a, uh, that is designed to um, evaporate moisture out of the samples so that they can actually weigh them. It's a standard test uh, that is done. It's, it must be done three times a week minimum. Uh, our, our furnace is from 1988. It finally has expired and uh, we borrowed the Emily City's backup unit and we're operating now uh, until we are able to purchase our own replacement. This is a uh, direct replacement of the unit that's there. And the cost, as you can see, is above the spending limit allowed. So I have to bring it to the commission for your approval. So I'm asking for your approval to buy this. If you have any questions, I think I can answer them. Council, any questions, discussion? <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a direct fit. There's going to be no uh, the, any additional installation fees. They plug and play pretty much. Actually, it's uh, and uh, the shipping is included. Okay. Random from our supervisor. Certainly appears that it's a necessity. And worse yet, I guess we're at this point we're violating the requirement mm -hmm. three tests a week. They borrowed Emily City's unit. So they yep. could complete the test. Right. Yes. Backup, you know, yep. Which is old, you said, didn't you? Yes. I, I have to ask, you guys usually do your do your um, diligence, but, and I know with wastewater there's limited vendors, but did we seek other bids other, other than this one? We did, in fact. Uh, the other units are made overseas. There would be uh, additional shipping involved, and there is no history on their life expectancy compared to this particular unit that is the same unit we have that's lasted for decades. And Tim, I use similar units like this in my line of work as well. And this is a very, very reasonable price. Usually you're three times this amount. So um, the purchase of the um, FB40 for 48025 muffler furnace thermal line in the price of $5,940. And I'll support. Motion made by President Pro Tem Dyke, supported by Council Member Kuklikowski. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Objections? Unanimously approved by all council members in attendance. Next. Uh, item on our regular agenda is proclamation as to our former council member, Dave Love. And I think in honor of Dave, I should read into the record the, the pro proclamation in recognition of Dave Love. Whereas David Dave S. Love who unselfishly dedicated 18 years of service to the village of Almont <clears throat> with great distinction and success, passed away peacefully on December 31st, 2023. And whereas David F. Love demonstrated the spirit of public service by serving on the Almont Village Council from 2002 to 2020, and the Zoning Board of Appeals from 2004 to 2020. And whereas David S. Love and his wife Mary in 2000 willingly set aside a portion of their property to the state of Michigan at no cost to the village to be designated as wetland as a wetland trade with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources so the wastewater treatment plant could be expanded onto its neighboring wetland. And now therefore be it proclaimed that the village of Almont hereby honors the memory of David S. Love for a life of outstanding service and extraordinary contributions to the village of Almont. And may it be further proclaimed that we spread upon the minutes of the village of Almont council as a permanent record of the achievements of 
and respect for one of the village of Almont's finest citizens, and that the original be presented to the family of David S. Love with sincere sympathy and appreciation, be it so proclaimed this fifth day of March, 2024. And that proclamation will be executed by the village manager and myself and presented to Mary and her family. Uh, anybody in council have any comments with regard to this proclamation? I'm glad that there's 50 people here to hear about Dave Love tonight because I can, I'll say two things about Dave Love. He had his own idea sometimes, but for anybody, and I wish he was here tonight to discuss the social district because I'd really like to hear what he had to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, with, with that said, for those who don't know Dave Love, he served this village for for almost 20 years um, with only the village at heart. That's all he cared about was, was doing what he thought was right. And if he thought it was right, he didn't care what anybody else thought. He was going to do what he thought was the best for the village. And in regards to the, the property donation he gave, so in back in 2000, um, we were um, ordered by the state to build a 1 million gallon overflow tank that now sits in behind the wastewater treatment plant. Well, there's wetlands back there. And we were going to have to purchase property at an expensive rate to <coughs> to um, have to complete this project. And he donated several acres of his own personal property up in Yale to turn into wetlands at his own cost to um, help the village. That, that was Dave Love in a nutshell. So um, for anybody that doesn't know him, appreciate somebody like that giving their time, their effort, their love to this village to serve for you. That's what Dave Love was. In a, in a nutshell. Dave often spoke outside the box, so to speak, and had a different take on issues than most council members and a lot of people out there in the community. But his thoughts and perceptions of issues um, were always welcome. I always encouraged him to speak to those issues because we should hear things from as many perspectives as possible. And Dave was that kind of man. And um, Tim and I attended the funeral um, the service in any event. And he was also, he was a um, Civil War um, reenactor, um, special, special kind of man. And so this proclamation is certainly well-deserved and I was very happy to see that uh, Bill has put this together. Any other comments from council? I can't well. say it any better than you two. Thank Pardon? you. Can't say it any better than you two. Thank you. Very well said, Tim. <clears throat> uh, public service, you don't see much of that uh, anymore, that's for sure. And being a giver uh, rather than a taker is uh, an issue in our community right now, and I would say nationwide. So it's good to see. Uh, next item on our regular agenda is Mr. John Dibo. I hope I pronounced your name correctly regarding the social district. Good evening, John. How are you? Good evening. How, how are you, are you Mr. How you, Snyder? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Good. <clears throat> Not quite sure on how this went. I wrote my little poem. Uh, probably am not going to need that much time. I do want to say thank you guys for uh, addressing the passing of Mr. Love when I first moved in. I'd called with a handful of questions. He was a big help. So uh, thank you guys for that. <sighs> wow. I memorized this in less than three minutes. I won't take too much you time. You have 15, actually. I, so. won't, I won't even take that much time, sir. Whatever you're comfortable with. My name is John Glenn Dibo, Sr. I live at 319 Kidder Road. I'm here tonight again to talk about the up-and-coming social district in Elmont. First off, to the DDA, this is by no means a voice against you as it may seem, but more of a concern. As we look at Elmont, one must agree it looks great again after a decade and a half of empty storefronts and dilapidated buildings now thriving with new businesses that my household uses and truly appreciates. So thank you to those involved, past, present, and future in making it happen as there are those who want things to happen and it looks as if it's being delivered 
from a coat of paint to great places to eat. And if no one's been to Senior Victor's yet, mm -hmm. I'd say we're on the right track. However, I myself can't grip the social district as I stated last time, as it was once a law, we couldn't drink outside the establishment, but now our government, government has given us the green light to go ahead. Personally, as I look at our nation, we see little to no consequences for any wrongdoing from looting to crossing the border and even assaulting police officers. Some say there are still laws on public intoxication. Well, let's be real, who's gonna police that one when we seem to uh, can't even get speeders under control in Elmont? Yet I will say, and I'm very happy to see, I have seen a lot of officers and a lot of pullovers getting done on Kidder Road. That for a school zone, a residential area, that, that means something. On another note, there seems to be something on Facebook about Sergeant Black and issues with her <clears throat> and the police department. Seems the school ain't the only one with problems here. But hey, if we can keep them drunk, high, confused, hopeless, and mostly divided, then the government can have the control they long for, and it won't be a party. This is usually how it starts. The mice are away, the cat will play. We drop our guard, let the fun begin. But since it's in the name of revenue, it's gotta be okay. But that didn't seem to work with the school bond, so it makes one wonder why this subject couldn't go on the ballot. If it goes well, great, but if there's an issue, who foots the bill? One individual said we can rescind it, but this ain't the sound ordinance issue, as this one may be a huge lawsuit, probably at the taxpayer's expense, as whenever drugs or alcohol are involved, all the big boys come out for a payday, and I'm sure our government will be right there to help us out after we take care of Ukraine, Middle East, and don't forget the illegals in China. And on that note, China is now looking to sue Michigan. How about that? Laugh if you will as Israel did in the Old Testament, but the laughing was over when they were taken captive by the enemy. And has America really done God any favors to merit protection? Go ahead and laugh again, but we are not invincible. Remember 9-11. Look in the paper about downtown Lapeer. Now they're going for a seventh dispensary and all the problems that that's brought on. And the residents are having a problem with the social district and the bike nights and the car shows due to the noise, but again, it's making money. Even our own fire department is having to up its game for burning issues. To the board, I know there's people behind me that they don't like what I'm gonna say, but maybe we should address our other issues before we let this snake out of the bag. I could go on and on. And what's next, if we retract this law, then is smoking and vaping gonna come back in public places, restaurants? because they'll say it's their right. Then we can call our YouTube friends back, Spanky Pants and Tater Salad, and they could stick their cameras in business windows. Some of you remember that when they came here with their cameras and windows because that's their right to do so. Would anything happen if somebody had a few beers out in the, probably not. But again, it's, they take one rule away and another rule and another rule their whole idea was to put socialism. Guys, we're losing our country. One law at a time that they take away. Every little thing that they give us for free, all that COVID money, I did my taxes a year later, every penny went back. And now take a look when you go in the grocery store, the gas station, Bidenomics is not working. That's about all I got to say on it. I, I thank you guys for your time, your consideration. So we talk about Mr. Love, that's our destiny, every one of us. Be careful how much we hate each other tonight. Thank you. Presentation and giving all your, our thoughts and energy uh, to this issue and you have the courage to step forward, um, especially uh, interest in your um, focus on the word hate. What's very much disturbing to me is a problem that seemed to be enveloping our nation has apparently come into Elma, where we have divisive, divisive issues, whether it be the school bond issue or the social district issue. It's no longer 
a matter what I'm picking up, whatever I pick up. I try to, as much as possible, stay off social media because that's an ugly mess. <clears throat> Where it isn't disagreement, it's hatred for people that don't share the same view as you. And Almont has been a pretty solid community, which has been growing and growing more in terms of being a cohesive community which had been moving in an upward direction. And Paul and I have been engaging each other for, I don't know, more than two decades. And, and I always respected Paula because she's, she's bright and she, she research, researches her issue and what she has to say normally is based on some kind of solid foundation. Um, but I, I'm seeing things out there um, in terms of the vitriol Towards, towards others who do not share your view, which is really disturbing to me because we were going in the opposite direction that these two issues come up and boom. It's something I'm very concerned about. And I, I'm hoping that my concerns are not well-founded, but what I've heard so far, they appear to be. <clears throat> and I, I just want to indicate that in terms of whether the decision of council, which was a six to one vote, to be honest, I was surprised. <laughs> I, I had no idea whether it was gonna, whether it was gonna pass or not, um, but it was a rather over, overwhelming vote. And <clears throat> just for myself, I have um, a great deal, very high respect for my fellow council members um, because um, fortunately, they all seem to be quite bright and thoughtful and look deeply into issues. Uh, we certainly do not always agree, right, Mindy? <laughs> um, and, and Tim. Um, uh, but um, these, these are people who really care about our community. As I indicated last time this was up, we're up here <clears throat> giving a, a good portion of our, our private lives, our personal lives, and our business lives. To, to sit here and do all of this. And the, and the DDA did not act uh, without any foundation. Uh, 112 communities have uh, adopted um, this social districting and we reached out and communicated with those other communities as to whether or not it was working out for them. We didn't have one negative response it wasn't as if we just went into this issue blind. <clears throat> I understand the concerns, um, and obviously th this is another divisive issue, which is unfortunate. <clears throat> um, but what I've seen over the years, and so I am now in my 29th year of serving um, village government, um, is that until you try it, you really don't know how it's going to turn out. It may work. It may be terrific, and in term, and I see it now in terms of revenue because that makes it sound rather shallow. But the additional factor that the DDA considered, and I have to sit on the DDA board at all, but, uh, um, because the chief elected official has to sit on the DDA board also. So I go to their meetings. Is um, the greater sense of community. And especially beginning with COVID and what happened there, which was a god awful event, and that, that's a major trauma on the whole nation. Um, <clears throat> so enhancing uh, community uh, um, has been a goal, and uh, there's been a lot of emphasis over the last um, few years, especially by Mindy pushing uh, our, the development of our park and giving more money to the park board so they could actually obtain new equipment and uh, refurbish the grounds and, the, and the, uh, uh, the structure there. And slowly but surely we have been, we get more money and more money and more money to the park board so they can do more. And I was very much on board with Mindy's effort um, because of the fact that again, that's community and parents and their kids and, um, and people from the community getting together. So 
Did we, did we stick our neck out on doing this? Yeah, sure. Gets chopped off. Yeah, that can happen. Um, and unforeseen consequences. It may turn out to be uh, a, a very positive development, and it may not. And the emphasis on the ability to modify the proposed plan, um, if there were certain issues that were coming before us that said it, it endangers safety, whatever the issue might be, then there may have to be changes to it. Or worse, worse yet, if it turned out, as some of you believe, that it's going to be <clears throat> such a negative impact, we can rescind it. And, and <clears throat> it is being and at present status is it has to be presented to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission, which has to approve of our plan, and that has not happened as yet. It's something that's being worked on, but it's um, uh, it's another development. And then uh, subsequent to that, if Michigan Liquor Control um, uh, does approve it, then the, the taverns will have to seek their own permits for it. So there, there is um, there's structure overseeing all of this. The village's proposal as far as the social district and then as to the taverns that will be requesting permits so we don't expect it to be an out of control uh process event um occurrence in our community um but it's trying to take another step forward i mean i look at it as we're we're taking taking another step into the the uh, 21st century is the way i see it and it um, and if it's not working out, then we'll pull it back and say, that did not work out. And, and whatever you whatever you put out there, because there often are unforeseen consequences, then you deal with those consequences. So uh, <clears throat> I, I was very impressed by the fact that this council did approve it on a six to one vote um, because it, it is it was and is highly contentious, um, but uh, from what I see, this council saw it as something that could work for a community, and we'll find out. Council? Yeah, just a couple of quick things. The gentleman that spoke that said you won't be listened to, um, if you have questions ever, I'm always here to listen to you. If you want to meet anywhere, call me. I run down your street, trip me when I'm running by. I'll, I'll talk to you um, because I'm happy that this room's filled tonight and we know what, what people feel like. Um, and, and so, you know, I've talked to several about, about this. I spent more than one sleepless night on the decision I made. And if anybody wants to talk to me after on why I made the decision I made, I'll be glad to discuss that also. If anybody has any questions, I'm always available. Um, and thank you for coming tonight because your voice is important and our my mind's never made up it's it's listening to you guys that put us here that is what i base my decisions on so so i can't speak anymore right i prefer we follow the rules listen to mindy <laughs> we put like them in husband, place for a reason. Like a husband listens to a wife. So, <laughs> so okay. Um, I, I do want to uh, just, um, and I, I don't want to hog the table here. The gentleman who raised the parking issue. Right now, before we have the social district, um, Fridays and Saturdays, that back lot behind my building and uh, the taverns. Uh, you cannot find a parking spot. Well, my Somebody's almost driving through my, my, my window. Is, is my interpretation mm -hmm. correct? If they wanted to have a concert back there, they'd have to come before council to get approved for that anyways? Yes, because they would have to open up the normal use areas versus right. the, the the larger um, zone. So those events would have to be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. <coughs> Special events? Special events <coughs> through a through, through council. Mm -hmm. But yeah, par parking is definitely a, a concern. The the um, the, um, the businesses, the uh, the new Mikeys, um, it's doing extremely well. Our senior Victor's apparently doing extremely well, and boy, they're really filling things up. So, 
um, lots of business activity even before social district and that that's a legitimate concern the I've, I've also had residents call call me and um suggest going forward if we have a hot button issue like this one don't act on it so quick which i think maybe we did and two um which i have some regret about and two social media is good but there's a lot of citizens here that aren't on social media so my thought, and, and and Paula is correct, the numbers are skewed because the social media numbers were 80 to 11, and five of those 80 were actual board members that voted, yes, I like it, from two boards. So that, that actually makes it 75, 11, and then you add the 50, you add the 50, 54. 54, and there's probably more than 50 in here tonight. I don't know how many are for. Um, <laughs> the, the, the balance of what people think is is, diff, is different, yeah. and if we would have surveyed the community multiple ways, we might have had a better picture of what the whole entire community thought. So, in my my opposition to to that is that it was obvious to me that it was very divisive and dragging it out over a few months, let's say, which would have given a much more, uh, much more of an opportunity um, to be um, thought about and digested and processed. Isn't, isn't that what we want in the, in the process, though? Uh, digest yeah, it? yeah, but I, I didn't, what I saw happening and what is happening in our village is the divisiveness continuing on. We either were going to do it or not do it. I, I thought it would be detrimental to the community. But there wasn't. There, so. Is there divisiveness here tonight? There's no divisiveness. They're just here. They're, they're concerned citizens here tonight, <sighs> saying what they think about about this. They're just they're here doing what, what we need to listen to on both sides. If we agree or disagree. And you speak to the community. So, uh, so you and I are not seeing the divisive issue in the same way. No, so, no, I yeah. agree. Yeah, but I, I just wanted to. Yeah, and I, I applaud all the people yeah, who, do, who did show up. And so thank you, sure. thank you everybody yeah, for you. coming tonight. Yeah. I do yeah. appreciate it. Any other commentary from council? Well, um, I just want to say that this was a very difficult decision. It's something that I struggled with uh, myself because I see both sides of the argument. Um, and I've said this several times now. Um, we didn't take this decision lightly. We weren't just a rubber stamp up here for the DDA either. And I think even the meeting where we ratified this, you know, we didn't just let them off and, and just rubber stamp it and kick it out the door. Like we were pretty rough on them too. I mean, I look at this, you know, I make very tough decisions like this all day long, every day with groups. Um, and sometimes you have to really filter the emotion out because we can what if any situation from now until the cows come home, but we don't know what we don't know. But I also look at this as a gift to the businesses downtown that want this. So it's their job to foster this and make it work. Because if it doesn't work, if we are having issues, this council, if from is my experience with these people, will not hesitate to resent. Because we don't want the issues in Elmont either. We love this town. We dedicate a lot of time to this town on our own dimes, on our own personal merit, because we, we invest ourselves in our communities. And we look at it that way. When it comes to safety, I work for a safety company. It's what I do all day long. My first question when this gentleman over here called me about this was M53. People walking across M53. The DDA has a plan for it. We're going to trust that that plan is going to work. If we don't like it, we're going to put more, more leverage behind it. You know, a gentleman asked about buying a beer out of uh, Speedway and walking over to one of the bars. No, it's not allowed. It's right there in the rules. It's not allowed. It has to be in an approved cup. They have plans in place and those things I expect the businesses to monitor those things and regulate it if they want to keep this. It's just like me handing the cars to my teenage son. He's not going to follow the rules, taking the car away. That's the way we all look at it here. And, and I know the, the, the meetings that we had and Tim, I do have to disagree with you a little bit. I think Mindy was very adamant about this, that we put it in the paper. We put it on social media because we weren't happy with how the DDA put it out there either because we weren't receiving the feedback because we made them go an extra mile. But it was, and, but it was presented yeah. to us 
we need it now then it was presented yes. to us the night that we did make the decision that we were mm -hmm. we but were we did push back and, and made them put it out there a little bit more which warranted some more feedback and well, it's we, up well we, we've yeah. got 60 people mm -hmm. here tonight or I, I don't know how many but I, mm -hmm. I would say the majority of these are not four I, and, I, and, I mean, the turnout's got, coming in. We're, and we're, and if we've got 60 people here tonight mm -hmm. that weren't aware of it, mm -hmm. then we didn't do our job. Yeah, yeah. You point. can only do so much. Yeah. Newspaper, flyers. I mean, yes. We, yes, we're, we're, we're receiving the feedback now, but we all have an obligation. If we're going <laughs> to quote the, the downgrade of America, we all have an obligation to keep an eye on what's going on locally, too. And people don't do it. People don't do it. They don't know what's going on in their local governments until something like this happens, you know, because I can, I mean, we can stand up here and grandstand about this too myself. So we have an obligation to keep an eye on things. And I'm, I, again, I applaud everybody's feedback on this. It, it's a tough decision. Um, it, it's something that I have to live with too, being a resident of this town. I think it could be good if we take care of it and we do the right thing and we got to do the right thing. But if it's going to be a disaster, I'll tell you right now, I'll be the first one to rescind it. But I fully expect and support the DDA and the businesses downtown that they're if they wanted this so bad, they're going to make it work. And we got to put the burden on them. Sure, everyone here that the, the council is not a rubber stamp uh, for the DDA. <laughs> uh, there's been some contentious, contentiousness between the two bodies, but not necessarily seen, uh, seen things the same way. So from that standpoint, no, we're not a rubber stamp for them. Um, number one, number two, normally there's nobody here. Nobody shows up. It's, that's all empty. And normally the only time over the 29 years I've been here that people show up is when they're angry. They're mad about something. And I'm glad you showed or up. Or concerned. They could be concerned because okay. I, don't, I don't see this crowd yeah. as mad. I see them yeah. as concerned for their community. In there and that's a yeah. different that's a different attitude to have yeah i was generalizing yeah, okay. yeah true and, and um it, i i certainly can't take the position or say that there's no reason to be concerned sure alcohol i as we've discussed a few times we're talking about a mind altering substance but that's humanity unfortunately whether it's cigarettes or alcohol or uh, prescribed medications or street drugs. We tried prohibition in this country, it didn't work out. No, you're not gonna do that to us. So, um, but with you know any mind altering substance, yeah, it's an issue and it's worth, it's worth concern. I, I agree with that. So I guess on the topic of the uh, rubber stamping, I guess for those in the audience that are not aware, I was the sole dissenting vote for the social district in the February 20th meeting. Um, I have heard the concerns similar to the ones mentioned today, which is why I voted no in addition to um, discussions I've had with members of the community. Um, I don't agree that approving and rescinding is the right approach in this case. Think it's our job to do our due diligence the first time and get it right um like tim was saying i think we might have rushed this and that's another reason why i voted no i think um like saying that over 120 other communities haven't had a problem with this is kind of missing the point in my opinion the point is that the community feels that their voice isn't being heard and they're being left out of the process and i think that's where our real point of contention is other council discussion on the issue okay so 
We are now have concluded with our regular agenda. Is there any public comment as to non-agenda items? It's a public comment for something that's not on our agenda. Evening, Jim. For the ones that don't know me, I'm Jim Alec, the one of the new owners of Mikey's. Um, I have two issues I'd like to bring up. One, there's a small little rumor I heard, and I call it a rumor because it didn't come from a solid fact. But I've sat on this council, and I fought for a long time to make sure that trailer park water bill was paid. And from what I understand, that bill is now behind again. And behind more than 30 days that anybody else in this town gets allowed to do it. And I think at this point, they've showed you people, if they are behind, that you need to shut their water off. It's, it's been an ongoing thing for years here. So at this point, you need to shut their water off if their bill is behind the $50,000 I've heard. If anybody in this audience's water bill was behind, it'd be shut off if it was $200. So the other one is I understand there's a non-smoking ordinance conversation coming up. There's already rules about that stuff. There's already laws about it. And it's not about the smoking on the sidewalk. I get it. The cigarette butts end up on the sidewalk. That's called littering. You can't enforce a red light ticket. You can't enforce the speeding down 53. How are you going to enforce if I stand in front of my business and smoke a cigarette? Because that's where I'm going to smoke every cigarette from now on. And I have a buck can out there, and we put them in it. Two or three times a week, I sweep that sidewalk. I sweep the curb. I sweep the paper that people throw out the window. That's up to the business in front of them. You can walk in any other business. There, there are cigarette butts outside them. So as far as making it a new ordinance, you can't smoke outside, I'm going to tell you I'm the first guy that's going to do it. And when I get the ticket, I'm going to tell you I'm the first guy that's going to drag it through court. So if you think a speeding ticket costs the police department money, wait till they write a ticket for smoking because I will drag it through court. If it costs me ten grand to not pay a $25 ticket, I will spend it. Thank you. Uh by the way, just so you and the audience are aware, what the council voted on was not an ordinance. It was a resolution. And uh, any further action you may want to take, you should pay attention to that comment on my part from the legality standpoint. Okay, any other public comment for non-agenda items? Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm on Jimmy's side. Uh, this no smoking ordinance is. Uh, this this is not going to work. And not only do I feel that you're telling people what they can and cannot do in town, um, it's their life. Let them live it. I, we sweep up every night. We sweep the lower tier, the top tier. People do miss a bucket once in a while. It ends up in the street. We sweep that up, too. I, I don't think you're going to stop it, but I'm on Jimmy's side. I'll fight. I will fight this for a $25 ticket. Who's going to enforce it? I mean, I think the police department has better things to do than, you know, run around trying to figure out who threw a cigarette butt out the car window. And I think we already got in trouble for that 10 years ago when we landed up on national news about one of our officers giving a ticket to somebody who threw a cigarette butt out the window. So I would like that to be back on national news. Being a small little town. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Any other public comment for non agenda item? Okay. Good evening. Uh, I'm Randy Eschenberg from the Township Board. I'm here tonight because at our last Township Board meeting, we had a Act 51 resolution put in front of us for Kidder Road and Tub Spring Road. I'm sorry, Holland Road. Did the board know about this? Council? I seem to recall some mention of it, but I don't I guess it, it came to us with these three pieces of paper. 
that the village wanted to take control of these two roads with no explanation why. And we were supposed to sign it that night. For goodness sakes, I mean, send somebody in there to, to explain it to us. And I made it clear to our supervisor that at our next meeting, I don't want somebody to come in before our meeting and expect us to approve this. There's a lot of questions that are going to be answered before that. That would be up to your township supervisor, wouldn't it? I mean, he should have. Well, I'm what, here what tonight saying? for the township. I didn't, I didn't like it, the yeah. way it was presented. It was just handed to us, and it was on our agenda. Well, all I'm saying, Randy, is then your township supervisor should have given you more advance notice of it and should have and had and made some sort of time's running here. So all I'm going to say is also, too, that it hasn't been discussed here. On the township board, we had a filled crowd one night in our audience, more than this. We had to deal with a noise ordinance. We let people speak for more than three minutes. Why? Because they're taxpayers of Elmont. We let them speak. I feel that's what we needed to hear. No offense, Randy, but you don't know how to run a meeting then. Because I've, I've watched meetings like yours, and I've watched meetings like it to take place in Bruce Township. It's public comment. Public comment. My name is Jacob Puinski from the township. <clears throat> to go with that cigarette ordinance. Um, I don't know if they're missing some stuff when they're sweeping, but I walk my dog pretty regularly on the village sidewalks in the proposed social district, and it is absolutely disgusting. Um, maybe someone needs to learn how to use a broom, but it's got to be a little bit better. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further public comment? As to non-agenda items. My name is Dennis McCarthy. I live in Lapeer. I have a law office in the building that I own down here in uh, Metamora, Caddy Corner from the White Horse. <coughs> and I'm running for probate judge. And um, I need uh, 400 signatures to get on the ballot. And... Um, I have about 400 right now, but my campaign manager is telling me I should get 500. So just wanted to introduce myself. And so far, I don't have any uh, opposition. So how do you feel uh, about social districting? You. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get vote? You want to get vote status? <laughs> So I just wanted to introduce myself. Thank you. Thank you. I will say. I will will say that Dennis and I have clashed frequently in in court, etc. He is a good attorney. He's a good man. So. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> um, by the way, I'm an elected official here in Elmont for 33 years, so I know how to run a board meeting. I am curious as to what happened to the video from the meeting you had at the fire hall because it's not on YouTube. I have friends who have wanted to see it. There is, there we can't no, there, find there it. There is no video. The, the internet connection at the fire hall was too weak to allow the video to play through. Okay. So, is there a transcription of that meeting? No. No notes? No. There's minutes. Okay. But is there a way I can obtain those? They're online. They're online. They? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. All right, thank you. Internet connection buffered that night and the connection died. All right. Is it okay if I talk on an agenda item? No. No? I think that time has passed. No. Not after hearing everything? Well, I can clarify a couple things if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> It was the no. agenda item, Andy. It, it would violate the rules. No, that's fine. Non agenda, fine. Any further public comment for non agenda items? 
It's me again, John Glendivo, 319 Kidder. After all this, I might start drinking and smoking again. Uh, <laughs> uh, curious, it was talked about a couple of years ago when they ran the new township sidewalk in down Kidder Road, that it was going to be extended down to Elmont Road and then up and around. Um, just curious, that's right in my front yard and would like to know if I'm gonna wake up from a nap and that ditch disappear like the other one did. And just curious if there was any talk on that or if that was just- Specifically where? Uh, it was- in front of your house, there were sidewalks on both sides now. Correct. Uh, what I was told at one of the car shows and I couldn't even tell you who said it, was they were going to extend that as a wide side rock walk right down to Elmont Road or in front East of St. Clair. Substation? Pardon me? In front of the substation? Yes. Substation. Or was it just going to go from my neighbors down to the substation? Just didn't know. Try to do an icebreaker or something yeah. in here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. No Nothing. Okay. I, I know there were some talks with DTE about some sidewalk issues, but I think that was more off of the Drakeshire area where they owed some sidewalks or something with the new substation. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. But I don't know if that was part of that or not, so that I'm not sure. <clears throat> Thank you. For the public comment for non-agenda items. Yeah, my name is Daryl Eastman. Um, I'm at 120 Bristol Street North. Um, I've been in between Almont Township and the, the village of Almont here for 32 years. Um, I love this village. I love this town. I lived in both of them. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I'm ashamed at how people throw paper in the parking lots. I clean it up every day, try to clean it up every day. No matter if they throw it or not, I'm still going to pick it up because I feel I want my area to try to be, keep it as clean as I can. Um, there's still bottles I picked up of one those one ounce liquor bottles. Um, I'm not saying against the, the drinking thing is besides me. I mean, I drink so I mean not all the time, but I have a drink once in a while. Um, my yard, the front sidewalk is horrible. I've seen them put sidewalks in around the town where the sidewalk has been put in at the same angle as a driveway. And there's been there's been one time where I tried to drive down the sidewalk and because of the angle of the sidewalk at the driveway point, it made me curve and run into the street on um, St. Clair Street and I almost got hit by a car. Um, might as well go on the the park the seats you have downtown all sharp corners for kids to bump their head on if it was a round corner the kids wouldn't if they bump their head they might get a bruise but you get to bump your head on a sharp corner and it's going to crack a skull i guess that's it thank you thank you any further public comment this evening Not <coughs> Being none, we are now finished with our regular agenda and our public comment time, and we're moving to open discussion. Which you may want to hang around for our audience because non-smoking ordinance in downtown district. It's open for discussion. And one of our council members wanted this on the agenda, and it's his turn, I think. Yeah, that was me. Um, and Jim, it's not about the bots. It's about the talk of the social district was bringing more people downtown families enjoying downtown families and people enjoying downtown well one of the one of the concerns i had about the social district is our sidewalk if you go to emily city they don't have a social district yet if you go to lapeer if you go to oxford their sidewalks are wide that you've got a lot of walking room a lot of places to to, to meander the area where the social district mainly is between St. Clair and the alleyway by the museum, the sidewalks are narrow and, and in two or three places you've got triangled out triangled out flower boxes where you can only walk one abreast. They're, they're, they're in that whole area. So it's not about the bots. 
if the businesses need to be responsible for cleaning that up. The the idea is is that we want to clean downtown in a in a clean atmosphere where families are enjoying that area while they're having their their um, social drinking. And um, no no disrespect to you, Chicky, but when you have people out there smoking, there's three or four out there usually at a time up on that ramp. It, it crowds the air. Um, so, so if we're gonna have a social district with more people downtown, more families downtown, is the emit of my concern is one health, but two, the atmosphere and and the ability of people to traverse downtown without having to inhale secondhand smoke. It's a health. It's one a health issue, but two, it's it's an enhancement issue of. Um, people and being able to enjoy the atmosphere downtown without having to intake cigarettes. Yeah. So, over the tier, they're standing against the railing. There's plenty of room up there. But, but, people, but people traversing by, <coughs> dancers or you know, going to the dance studio. But they're but it's secondhand small. Okay. The and exhaust so, is worse than that. The, most of the businesses over by me close at five o'clock, and that is. Even <coughs> But somebody took out my stairs. Otherwise, I could throw them on the lower tier because there's plenty of room down there. I don't know who took the stairs out, but nobody ever asked me. It was part of the enhanced uh, project of the DDA because the, they were having issues with that ramp. Okay, I well, believe. either way, I still have like skateboard kids and everybody else jumping over, jumping down the ramp anyway. So, I, so I had over the railing. So I had to put on the agenda so we could have this kind of discourse. Right. But, so. I mean, I can throw, because right now I'm not even part of the social district because everybody's telling me there's not enough room where I actually have plenty of room. We've been hanging out at that place. We've been hanging outside for over 25 years. So there is room out there. Whether it's smoking, drinking, whatever, there is still room down there. If you wanted me to get them off the railing, put back my stairs. And not to be too technical, you are still in the social district, but you were eliminated, shall we say, uh, from the common area at uh, the, the front of your bar. And well, I know you'd like to address there. council sometime uh, about that, but well, we that's, have, another, that's another issue. But what it seems, what, what, it's, it's what your position bumps up against him is, so we have a law that says you cannot smoke inside of the buildings in the side of the taverns. So all the time outside of the taverns, you see people out on the sidewalk now smoking because they can't smoke inside. So then you would be telling them you can't smoke inside and you can't smoke outside. So yeah, they, can uh, smoke out, they, can, they can smoke outside, just not on, on Main Street. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so you, you want to tell them to go in back of the building where the trees are going through the cars and it's like some kind of disaster area. No. I, 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 are more of a hazard. Andy? Can I, are we allowed to come up uh, and talk on this issue? Smoking issue? Yeah. Well, you're asking for the crowd. I can give you a little context of the sidewalk. I'd prefer that we off. stick to the rules that we set in place. Nobody can talk. Well, you're, okay. you're, you're getting, you're getting caught up from other people. I, it didn't say you wanted a discussion on it. Tim opened the door to discussion. Could I come talk? We need to we need to establish order. Well, you already said you want a discussion, Tim. You want me to come up the clock or you want me to do it from here? I'll you guys can come up the clock so it's on the record because people online are telling me they came here. I'll be glad to come up and clarify some stuff about the stairs. So, if you have a comment about smoking specifically, yeah. state it. Yeah. So, when we did the original project a couple years ago, we actually looked at building out that area and giving them a wider area for people to hang out with for. Right? We were going to bring that out to be within ADA of people walking by to give Chicky more area in the stoop. That was shot down. Okay. So unfortunately, we did that because at the time, people were concerned of, unfortunately, people hanging out in front of her business. So at the time, we thought through actually giving them more room to not do what we're doing now. But unfortunately, that proposal was shot down. Okay. So that is there. There's plenty of room that's there. She's been doing it for how many years out there? 
Right. Now it's an issue, right? So it, it hasn't been policed before. Why all of a sudden are you policing it now? Yeah, I brought it up at the last meeting, but I brought it up for the fact that you haven't done anything about 20, 30 years. So now all of a sudden you're doing about 20, 30 years. I thought it was off. I thought it was worth a discussion. That's why we're it, it is. It is. is. So so maybe give us about 50 grand and I'll build back out that area that stoop we were looking to do. She'll have plenty of area up there for her patrons. We'll solve the problem. To use your BDA money to do that. Well, we're, we're, we might be spending 350 for more parking spots, 200 for more parking spots. I'll be glad to look at money for all sorts of stuff. There's a lot that we're looking on to expand the area. But hampering her just because of her is a problem. But if we got to spend 50 grand so her patrons can go outside, so you can walk hand in hand with your wife down there, we'll do it. I'll make it happen. Or we'll make it happen. But we did look at remedying that issue before, and we were shot down with it, just so everybody knows. Further discussion from council as to the smoking issue. Guys, open this door. Yep. Today, when I went and spoke with approximately 25 to 30 is business owners. Related? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Yep. Keep it on point. Um, Andy, they talked. Be respectful. Be respectful. I am. Be respectful. No, you're not. Be respectful. They were talking about the smoking issue, and I had to explain to them about with every single one. I had to explain to them about this DDA drinking stuff. Okay, and then it would come up. Does this have something to do with the smoking issue? And you'd be surprised. I'm not at liberty to say, but you'd be surprised about the business owners that are upset that the cigarette butts and everything, they're behind you. And it's because they're tired of seeing the smoking. When you drive through Elmont, that's what you see in front of our businesses. And it doesn't encourage people to stop. And that's not me saying it, it was them. And um, one particular guy, I was floored because I thought for sure, you know, he'd be behind social drinking. And he's, he's no. And he commented about the cigarette smoking and how much they would like the, the um, commons area to be moved behind the buildings because of the smoking. People get out of their cars, you have your kids and everything, and they said they don't want to deal with the smoke going into the businesses. And that's what I heard today from about three or four people. Thanks for the input. I'm cutting off further public comment on it. Is there any further discussion amongst council members with regard to Tim's issue. Well, I just brought it up to get council's input to see if, if it's something they wanted to pursue further. Um, I've stated my my reasoning why I wanted to open the floor for discussion. So, um, what are the current rules about smoking in front of businesses? Is there entrances, I, a sort of a setback? What I've seen in uh, certain buildings. Um, so I believe it's part of the law. You're not supposed to smoke within 25 feet of the entrance. That's what I thought. Which nobody obeys. But it, it well, might I even say be with regard to the taverns, feet. I think there's some yeah, distance. If I remember at, at uh, my place of employment, this is in Oakland County, it was 50 feet, but I don't know if that was statewide or. Yeah, contingent. so I've seen any, 25 feet. Yeah, so any yes. discussion for me? I'd like a start of understanding the baseline for what right. the existing rules are mm -hmm. and you well, know what well that would that would have the village manager bring back more information to us and that's why we put it on for open discussion tonight to see if we wanted to pursue that further or not um i wouldn't mind seeing those rules and maybe see if any other maybe see if any other communities have anything in place i mean my whole intention was I thought it would be make downtown cleaner for people enjoying the social district. So check with not, the, not to hamper the businesses. But. Check it with the other social yeah. districts that yeah. have been adopted, where they have adopted yeah. it, over 100, <clears throat> however many. And I guess with, they're doing. with this new concern um, on top of this, I know we briefly talked about this, you know, I guess the my question is for the DDA as well. Why didn't we consider behind the building for those designated areas? To me, it makes more sense. It's a, it's, 
and the buildings in a lot of areas too. Do right. Well, and that, that's, I guess, if that's the rationale, but. Uh, but that's um, a different topic for the yeah. time. Yeah. The same point. You want to answer to that? Oh, oh. Me, you and I can talk after the meeting and to, to stay on point. But uh, um, yeah, if this is a, a grave concern. Maybe that that is an option to explore. So, but yeah, I would like to better know what the, the current rules are, what they what they imply. I mean, this has been in effect for a very long time in the state of Michigan. I, yeah, I mean. I'm fine with that. Yeah. It sure is interesting. You can drink, you can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't smoke. Right. Talk about overregulation. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh boy. Um, any further discussion on uh, this um, no, non-smoking ordinance? So yeah. the next time this uh, topic comes up, can we have the, the DDA like officially come in? And because as a newer member of the board, I don't know what has been presented in the past when people talk about what's been presented, what hasn't been. Um, as to I, what issue? Well, um, I guess regarding the uh, smoking areas and, you know, going behind the buildings, I'd, I'd like to see what presentations were possibly given to the council before or if they have new ideas. Sure. Doesn't exist. Okay, no. I'm aware oh, okay. Smoking's never been discussed um, by DDA. Um, this just came out of the blues because of the meeting we had um, two meetings before. Um, and um, D-Day has not engaged with council as to the issue. It, just, it came um, out of the blue, so to speak. I think maybe you had some input from citizens regarding that so there, there's nothing and, prior and, and andy actually mentioned we haven't been regulating you know we haven't regulated it in 30 years so why don't we create an ordinance and i'm like well if we're doing the social district and we want clean clean air downtown while people are out enjoying their drinking it might be a good idea to do it that way. discussed so you know what you have to do mr manager <coughs> yes sir Right. So, are we concluded yeah. with um, that issue? All right, fine. Uh, comment time. Anything to bring to council, Mr. Manager? Yes, I uh, have a few items, but a couple that I've added since we've been sitting here this evening, <laughs> uh, Mr. President. The first, uh, I I knew this might come up this evening. Uh, this village got a ruling from its attorney back in December of 2022, that in regard to DDA's nepotism is not, uh, it is not nepotism to appoint someone to the DDA board that is or has an elected official or another member involved in a board or committee. So uh, that question came up. I had that document uh, in my hand, so I thought I'd just remind you of that. The city attorney has, re, or village attorney has reviewed it and ruled that uh, it, that it is in fact not nepotism. Um, another item that was on my list is uh, I had a great meeting with the regional DTE rep. Uh, we I had him in town because of issues that I noticed uh, around town with new poles going in place, uh, extra poles going in place, uh, the poles being in our road right-of-ways, uh, and one of the topics, the main topic or the first item that got my attention when I toured town was a big section of missing sidewalk on DTE property when I know that they pride themselves on being uh, good community stewards. Uh, they actually installed a driveway without a permit, and they have a, a big area uh, that is void of sidewalk on their property. So uh, he assured me that they would be looking into that and taking care of it very soon. He even asked if we had a contractor that we used that could do it. And I said, no, you're going to have to handle that all on your own. But uh, you can look forward to that being uh, something that's taken care of in the future. Something very disappointing that I heard this evening is the concern from the township board regarding the item that I made you aware of in my last memo. Um, in my first day on the job, I noticed that there was a big section of roadway 
in front of the school that wasn't cared for, very icy. Uh, and I spoke to our staff and they let me know it was county maintained road. We're on the far corner of the county, uh, off the main road. It's a section of road that would be more difficult for them to hit. Uh, matter of fact, in the memo I gave you, or just the very brief note in the last agenda, uh, those two sections of road I had noticed had been a problem. And there's a lot of traffic from our residents, township residents, uh, and of course, children coming into school early in the morning before the uh, road crews can get there. Our road crews pass over it multiple times every morning and day because they're traveling to the uh, the piece out in front of uh, Village Hall. They're traveling to the industrial park. So they're going up and down that section of road, but they have no responsibility for it. Uh, the corner up at uh, Tub Springs and is always uh, uh, worse than usual, but again, it is a priority for the County Road Commission, but it's uh, tougher for them to get to it than it would be us. So uh, I had at least two thorough discussions with the township supervisor. We discussed it with the County Road Commission engineer uh, manager, and they thought it was a great idea for the village to take over those two sections of road so that they would be treated quicker, uh, more appropriately in the winter in particular. Uh, and then we could go through the process. They were behind it. I was under the impression the township supervisor was behind it and would have conveyed that. So uh, I asked to go forward with the paperwork. The steps, as I think I noted in my little memo, was it has to go to the township board to be released jurisdiction. Then it would go to the county road commission to open up the jurisdiction. And then it comes back to us to accept the jurisdiction. Uh, I laid a little groundwork with you, um, as I say, a couple of weeks ago, but I thought that was a, a pretty smooth thing that was going to come down uh, through the process. I thought it had been discussed. Evidently, it had not, and there would be some objection to uh, our crews maintaining those sections of road over the distant county road commission. So I'll, uh, I'll, I actually was invited today to the township board meeting, their next board meeting next month. Uh, so I was planning to attend and go over these this with a little more detail with them. Um, uh, one quick question, um, and along with that um, responsibility for maintaining the road, we'd have the ability to set speed limits? Absolutely. Uh, that was an item, as a matter of fact, it was almost a joyful topic that um, that would be great because then the village has the authority to set its own speed limits, and the township was unable to get cooperation from the state police to reduce the speed in front of the school. So they were excited that that would happen and we would obviously mark it the same as it is uh, going by Village Hall. But that's just would have been another plus in the process. But thanks for bringing that up. Question about, I guess, the the salt material, things of that nature, would that just be put onto the village budget yeah. then or would they be a charge back to? No, there's a uh, a slight revenue that comes from jurisdictional control of okay. the roadway so that we would receive the revenue for that section of road uh, un, instead of instead the township of, that understand. assigns it to the county road. Okay. What's the total footage of the roads we're inheriting? I, I can't give you an exact footage because I didn't go out and measure it. We have to do that after, uh, but it's roughly a mile. Okay. So for we're bringing on a mile that means we're also responsible for maintaining that going forward correct mm -hmm. but we get the 51 money for it yes okay yeah that's why i say now that money is uh awarded to the township who automatically assigns it to the road commission to do that my only concern is is a few years ago we already inherited from mcintosh to drakeshire because of um the uh, melting laws the frost laws um and adding more road with our village with with the roads are already right in conditions 
I'm hesitant to want to inherit more road that I've got to keep main, maintained and paved. Sure. Sure. Well, again, if the pluses that I laid out you know, wouldn't be adequate, then we wouldn't accept jurisdiction in the end. But at this point, the, the process had started. And again, I thought we were moving along quite smoothly, but uh, I, I'm mistaken with that. As usual, be balancing act, yeah. pros and cons, and that's what we deal with so much of the time. Sorry, Grant, down. So uh, the next item I was going to touch base on is uh, I'd been waiting for a proposal for a new DPW building uh, construction from the ground up. That was one of your major topics when uh, I, I was brought on board. So now I have received that uh, with some basic plans. We have now a, a hard number that we can use to look at all of the options available to us. And again, I, I think I put in my last note that I would expect to have that to the board the end of this month. Um, Oh, uh, exciting news. We're going to be uh, lining our sludge tank at the wastewater treatment plants starting Monday. That is a project you awarded last year, and they've been waiting for uh, minimum weather standards to be able uh, to come in and do that. So that project will start when it's completed. Uh, and be, while it's ongoing, they're going to clean a line that was a problem caused by the deteriorating sludge tank replace the pump that was damaged, and then the plant will be, with the new door and the new pump in place, it'll be back up to smooth, full operation. Um, we had an excellent meeting today, uh, the treasurer and I and the DPW, or D, DDA executive director. Uh, we looked at their budget and their plans for the next year. Uh, it went very well, and I look forward to um, I didn't know that I was to be or have been invited to DDA board meetings, but I'm definitely going to be attending at least the next DDA board meeting. Um, we've got an enormous amount of information that went out to four different companies to bid our property and liability insurance. Uh, those are finally complete. So by the beginning of April, we'll start to get those um, proposals so we then can weigh them and I can make a recommendation to the council on who we should select for our uh, insurance provider going forward. Um, oh, another big topic that was brought up here this evening and I can't give you a absolutely definitive answer, but I had a great meeting with the manager of the mobile home community yesterday. Uh, they asked for an extension. They were given none. And they contacted me in writing today to say that they would be in. One of the items that was the topic was their water bill. They would be in to pay it in full today. I, I neglected to ask the ladies when they left if they had actually stopped in but they know that their water will be shut off tomorrow if it isn't paid in full by tomorrow. Um, additionally, we talked about their tax paying history and how we have implemented the maximum penalty going forward on a monthly basis. I gave them an example bill of what it will cost them if they're late on their tax payments going forward. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but they have to pay monthly um, and I understand that if they lose their manager, they won't have someone in place to see to that, but they're going to have to make a deeper bench to ensure that they do cover those items because there will be a very significant penalty if they're late again. And, and they've had a copy of that. Um, we, had a, we also talked about them expanding their property. I have discussed with the township supervisor the if they would be opposed to the park expanding. He was I was told no, so I've conveyed to the park manager uh, that we would not be opposed to seeing plans for them to expand as well. Uh, affordable housing is an important 
thing in high demand at the moment. And uh, I think if they were to expand, we could make it work and make it uh, compliant with all of today's codes and regulations. Um, and the last thing I have on my list is I was doing signed enforcement. I notified you of this in writing uh, in my last report, but I'll bring it up again. And then I'm gonna ask the um, local papers to cover this a little further tomorrow uh, when we pick them up. But when I was out to doing some sign enforcement, I spoke to the wonderful people at Creekside and they were uh, so uh, impressed with the way the chili cook-off went and uh, the interest in the pocket park that they have donated um, to um, natural gas or propane gas fireplaces to use for events uh, in town. If you recall at the chili cook-off, there was a small wood burning uh, fire pit that got a lot of attention. This would be just very, uh, very much cleaner and safer way to enjoy the outdoors in our downtown and they can be used at any time uh, with it being propane and uh, I, I thought it was very generous of them i had actually been inquiring to see what the cost were and they just jumped right in and said they were willing to donate two to the village and the dda and uh, so i picked them up tomorrow they're in we're going to go pick them up and uh, get photos and, and all that sort of stuff so that's it on of course i'll answer any questions if you have any dte uh property which where was that located the was that the substation? substation in town is on the corner of um kidder and kidder and okay. uh, st Clair. so that is the the sidewalk that the gentleman mentioned yeah. as well so. did you hear that about the sidewalk <laughs> that was in front of the substation the sidewalk that um okay. yep do you know, Dale, whether the um, lagoon is still um, in place, uh, operational, as to expanding the trailer park? They, they had because they they didn't have their own sewer capacity, as I understood it, and so they had actually, I think, built a lagoon back there. It's all swamp back there. <laughs> uh, I used to run that area with, with my dog. Um, but I had understood when they wanted to put that, um, when they wanted to expand the mobile home park previously, they had established some sort of lagoon. And, it, I, and so that's something that certainly would have to be looked at. Yeah, that's considered planning commission. Oh, planning absolutely. Commission. Absolutely. Uh, and well, have they been, been presented? Has no, been no. Presented? No. Okay. I think Dale, what Dale's saying is they have interest and they were seeking if they wanted to take further steps. I think that's where okay. we're at right now. Okay. All right. And it, just so you know, I know they have a sewer system. I don't know if they if it's a lagoon is part of it. But in the over aerial photo that we were looking at at the time discussing it, I, I didn't notice anything like that in the in the photo. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Anybody else questions of our manager? Kim, anything to bring to council? Sir. Wayne? No, I just uh, wanted to thank everyone for coming out and getting all your thoughts and so we can look, look at that in the future. And I appreciate everyone's time, taking time out, come out. Tim? No, just thanks for everybody for coming out. And I know what Mindy's gonna say, so I'm sorry I broke protocol tonight. <laughs> I wasn't even gonna mention it. <laughs> um, so you're not gonna mention it. Not gonna mention it. Um, so in my last comments to council, um, I had mentioned that I invited um, Clinton River Watershed Council to come to this meeting. Um, unfortunately, because of the cancellation of park board meeting due to illness, um, they were they felt it would best would be best to talk to park board, see what interest level um, there are in projects in the park, and then come talk to council. So um, we're going to push that back until that's probably going to be May, unfortunately. Um, but just wanted to let you know that that, that still is in the works. It, it just got pushed back due to uh, meetings getting canceled. Um, another thing I wanted to just briefly mention is that um, I did have that conversation with um, the engineer from MDOT that covers um, this area. Um, 
and it was really, really nice conversation, actually. I'm, I'm, some of you may be surprised, um, but um, we did chat about a number of items, um, improving crossing safety at M53. Um, he had some ideas for us to consider um, to increase visibility, um, to provide some more protection for pedestrians crossing that area. Um, some of them might involve losing a parking space or two, um, sort of extending the curb out so that there would be a shorter um, stretch that people would have to walk. Um, so he had some ideas that we could consider. Um, so if, you know, council um, is interested in hearing what those might be, we could engage with MDOT and have them come out um, and explain what options might be available. Um, we also be talked about the... Yeah, we also talked about yeah. the curve, um, about um, how we might improve um, visibility for people to slow down, particularly trucks in that area. Um, I know we engaged with them before, and that's where we came up with the, the hash marks um, that they laid down in that area. Those are starting to wear. Um, so And that created that mess. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it took we, up the island. we also, you know, talked about some other some increased signage, some visibility in that area. Um, and also kind of good news is that um, another area that we're concerned about is the Right Aid Plaza pullout. Um, and he said I, that he believed that we were met the time frame for doing another traffic study, at least the initial one to determine if a, a greater study um, would be needed um, for the potential of a light in that area. Again, slowing traffic down, having the ability to more easily turn left. So I think that was a really good um, and productive conversation. Um, one thing I wasn't really happy to hear was that um, they're, um, con I think it's past considering that the light um, that we have for pedestrians now um, across from the former PNC is slated for removal. Uh, yeah, um, unfortunately, it sounded like there was some misunderstanding of who they should be communicating with that on. Um, so they're now aware that that person would be Dale. Um, and he also mentioned that they may be able to push that decision back since we didn't have input um, in, in that decision making. So, um, I pass along your information, Dale, for them to reach out to. Um, but yeah, I'm sure we want to be talking we about need that. To, we need to convince them to keep that light. I mean, yeah, I agree. I, I expressed my dissatisfaction <laughs> with the removal of that light. Mm -hmm. The firms it's, in Michigan that they're playing with, and we're talking about taking out pedestrian yeah. safety. And it's, but that's why the light isn't working, is they said, well, when we do the study, they remove the ability to. But they it. turned it back on during the summer and then turned it off in September. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. So, so that's when school starts. But I, yeah, I, I requested we get an update. So I don't know if they've reached out to you yet, Dale, but I was going to touch base with them again and make sure that we get you guys connected. And I think that's it. Ed? Um, thank you, everyone, for your, your feedback. You know, uh, Together, we'll make a stronger community for sure. And then Dale, thank you for all the, the good news uh, that you shared today. Uh, one thing I do want to bring up, speaking of uh, speed enforcement within the village, I know we had talked to uh, Mr. Trent uh, a while ago before he went out on medical with some of the uh, uh, visual haptic uh, speed signs, um, at least on St. Clair, Elmont Avenue. Um, I've noticed that in some of the other uh, towns and villages in the area, they put those uh, the digital speed limit signs uh, in many locations, like in Leonard, those sorts of things. Uh, it seems like when we have our police trailer sitting out, I actually physically see people slowing down and actually paying attention. Um, it, I think it's better than just a regular average Joe sign. Um, I know I looked them up at one point in time to even have one put into Drakeshire. I think they're about six, 7,000 a piece, but uh, I don't know if there's any grant money out there or whatever, but at least on some of our major side streets, I think it'll be a good start uh, just to help. Yeah. That's 
So budget season. Yeah. So I, I think it's <laughs> worth exploring uh, at this point in time, seeing them pop up in many communities around us. And, and it, it gets my attention driving to work every morning through those, those areas and just quick reminder to slow down a bit. So, all right. That's all I have. Steve. Um, I had a technical question for Kim. Um, so in the, uh, regarding the video and the live stream, um, I'm concerned about in the essence of transparency, uh, residents not being able to view the live stream. It seems to be a ongoing issue and I, I don't know what the root cause is and I'm not, um, I, I just like, would like to know, you know, is it an internet issue? Is it a recording issue? I'm wondering, is there a way we can back up a video and do a live stream at the same time or is, do we need some kind of technical support um because i think it's good to have a, a recording of all of our meetings we would definitely need technical support because i am the it button pusher so i just push <laughs> buttons until it works so that's, yeah I have that's no fine. technical yeah no i'm not asking <laughs> you to solve it i'm just asking okay. <laughs> is there something we can do so we because it seems like every other meeting we have there's and i'm not blaming you or the software or anything i just yeah. want to figure out what what the issue is i, I at the fire hall, I believe it was a bandwidth issue because we had seven computers on the Wi-Fi, or actually eight computers on the Wi-Fi, um, and that's what I've been told. It's a band bandwidth issue here. I'm not sure because at the last meeting it, it didn't buffered. Work. It didn't work. So, and we're connected directly to fiber, so that I don't understand. So I'll have to get someone. Yeah, uh, like, do they more. have a support? number or something we can call or you know. yeah okay i can try to reach out to our it company okay and then um the only other thing i had uh dale i have a question on on the uh priest paving category b road project i don't know if you um have any update on uh that i know it started uh last fall probably before you were here um they were supposed to continue their paving work in the subdivisions i don't know if you have a um have heard from them when they plan on continuing i know we're aware of it they're aware of it but i have not heard a start date okay. um the key to asphalt is temperature so it has to be a consistent i, mean, I just took the class so mm -hmm. it has to be a consistent ground temperature before you start paving and i i can't imagine they'd be able to start before the end of april but mid-april but uh, we can find out what the the plan is now yeah when we'll the just, plants open right. and, and get things rolling. Yeah, but so yes, we can no, give notice to the residents. And sure. Stuff before. Right. Okay. That's all I had. Do you know whether Mobile Home Park showed up today? They hadn't as of four o'clock, um, but I'm not sure after that. It's all weird. Tomorrow. <clears throat> I mean, what <clears throat> we have to keep in mind, and this is something that we um hashed over for i think a couple of years so you sh if you shut off the water you're going to affect the um, habitation of at least 500 people inside inside that trail park you just shut off the water especially with no notice um, i've always understood um mr alex aggressiveness on that issue and he did help push the issue and he made a difference so he did a great job mainly i think he scared the hell out of them <laughs> because he, he kept saying we're going to shut your water off but and the park owners um do not appear to be quote human humanitarians <laughs> they don't care so much about the people in there um but on the other hand we should and so if you're just going to turn the water off it's like you have all those people in there. Some are um, just a single resident, some are um, a couple, and some many have children. So whatever steps we take, I think we have to take that into consideration. I agree, yeah. Steve. Um, it's no fault of their own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then when we started coming down on them, um, they they were <laughs> They, they raised the rent because yeah, it used to be that I think they were built into individually and then they stopped doing that and then, and they raised the rent uh, uh, for them and 
but weren't pro providing appropriate services. It, it's kind of a nightmare situation. But obviously, the, vi the village does have to be paid for water, but I think we have to do it with rationality and considering. Uh, it was uh, my intent. Our plan would be to, there's 154 active units in the park. We would have prepared a flyer with notice of the individuals we've worked with the owner and the manager and their phone numbers to contact uh, once the water is, is actually shut off because it calling us won't help so uh that would have happened before we shut the water off yes thank you so i guess I think with regards to the management of that park and constantly constant turnover and is the and, Zero. The local management doesn't get much support from the regional management. So, so to be clear, the plan is to make flyers tomorrow, hand them out, and then shut it off? If if we have to shut it off, we will notify them first. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, at, not, least, at least by the end of the day. Hours yeah. Yeah. At least close a business mm -hmm. to contact their landlord, and if not by 4 oh, o'clock, then yeah. It, yeah. If you're an individual homeowner and you haven't paid your bill, you're well aware. They, they may not know and may need to prepare. I mean, they could you know, be elderly, the have limited transportation and no resources. So we need to give them notice. Some bathroom facilities. So when they go in the backyard, it's kind of a night, nightmare scenario. So any of that, yeah, I just want to make sure it would be. Thank you for that. bringing that up. Yeah. So, um, all you obviously you came here because you have interest in our community and well-being of it thanks it's much appreciated we're adjourned okay.